and we're live i guess all right let me check that everything is okay and running cool all right welcome everyone uh welcome nate uh i'm thank glad you. to have you um thank you for making it um i wanted to have you on this call as well because uh, and and uh accommodated the time for it. We're kind of like yeah, in two different uh, opposites uh, on the globe. <laughs> so it's it's morning for me, uh, night for you. Correct. So yeah, welcome, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really uh, appreciate uh, you reaching out and having me on the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, as a Disclosure: I'm a big fan of Nate's art uh, since uh, I first saw it on the on the platform as a, a few weeks ago. Uh, I really liked. Uh, I was really in a personal. Um, I mean, it really resonated with a personal time for, for me. So I I really wanted to have Nate on the show, kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, making okay. like <laughs> yeah, enjoying myself as well on the on the way. Um, so yeah, uh, Nate, um, we'd love to, to, I mean, on the show, we'll chat about you. We'll chat about your background as an artist. Uh, we'll chat about an artwork. Uh, this artwork is first contact and it's available. Um, it's available on super, uh, now, um, and we'll chat about many different interesting things. So guys stick with us. Uh, but I can think. Uh, I think we can start with um, a short introduction from Nate. Would love to hear more about you because I don't know much about you, Ali. Okay, no worries. Well, uh, Nate, I'm. Uh, I might not give away my age, but um, uh, I'm an artist, a digital artist, uh, freelance photographer and videographer as well, uh, based in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I've been at the digital art uh, stuff for probably, I don't know, maybe about eight years or so now, awesome. maybe, maybe a shade longer. Uh, before that, um, it was primarily photography. So if, we, so if I deep dive back a little bit, I did a um, part of a visual arts degree in, in university. Uh, I left that degree to be in bands and uh, do some touring as a musician. Cool. Uh, yeah. Bands and music are uh, a major part of my life, which you may discover as we, we go through. Yeah. Uh, then I um, started teaching, teaching drums. So that was sort of my full-time profession for a long time. I was a, an instrumental music teacher teaching drums in schools. As I was doing that, uh, I always had a camera with me. So when I was driving to work, quite often I'd pull over and take landscape photos. Um, that was kind of my passion, uh, just as a hobby uh, with, with photography. Hmm. Uh, once we had our little daughter, who's not so little anymore, I, I um, got a little bit more into portrait photography. Okay. Uh, and started, uh, I was a stay-at-home parent for, for my daughter when she was little. So I started just doing uh, the occasional um, family portrait and things like that just as a, a little side hobby slash job type thing Cool. while I was looking after my daughter. And um, from there, um, Instagram became a thing. Uh, and when Insta I was a bit of an early adopter with Instagram, and uh, when I jumped into the that whole days, world, right? <laughs> sorry, before, be, before it, it it became flooded with the uh, ads and <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was I was it was very a very new app when I jumped on, and I have to say a thanks to my uh, sister for that. Actually, she kind of convinced me to jump onto it. So cool. shout out to Ali if she's watching at some point. But um, yeah, so when Instagram became a thing, I. Um, I started discovering some graphic artists and and uh, people who were manipulating photos and doing different things to what I was doing, and mm -hmm. I, I really really struck me. So it was something that I wanted to figure out how to do, and just for my own, you know, personal 
enjoyment and artistic, you know, bit of creativity. And so once I d sort of jumped into that world, I've, I've never really looked back from there. Uh, it sort of very um, surprisingly kind of turned into a bit of a career, uh, whether it be, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. I still sometimes have to pinch myself that I get to do these creative things um, for a living. Yeah. So I started making, um, I started doing photography for bands, promo shots, and then that sort of flowed into doing some posters and some graphic, more graphic kind of stuff for bands. And, and now a lot of paid work that I get is making album covers for bands. Yeah, I saw the, in some interview I read, like uh, you said, one of your, your favorite artists was uh, the artist behind the famous cover from Radiohead, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And Stanley Wood is one of my favorite artists. I love him. I, I want to go back to like the early days, let's say, um, of when you were younger. I mean, was, uh, you know, uh, creative endeavors and, you know, um, art in general, music, photography, um, uh, something that you always had, you know, uh, I mean, you always, always knew you would, would, would want to do that uh, later on, like when you grew up, or was it something decided a bit later? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, as a child, were you like, I'm going to go for art for sure, or I want to be an astronaut, or I've been a policeman, or... <laughs> Hey, question. I um I was always I, I loved drawing when I was very young, uh, yeah. and that's something that I felt like I was reasonably decent at as I went you know through school and grew up. Uh, so I, I feel like I've always had that creative aspect to my personality and to to what I enjoy doing. Mm. Uh, I don't know if I ever set out. I don't think I ever set out to be. An artist or in a, in a field, you know, where art is a career. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did kind of, I did think that I would always be doing something creative. So I, I did get into music um, fairly young. Yeah. Uh, when I started playing the drums, I always wanted to be in bands and doing that. So there's always been that creative element to to things that I do. Yeah. So you started with music, uh, yep. then photography, yep. uh, then digital art came, came later. Um, and even video, I guess, video making. Yep, that's been a pretty recent kind of development that's sort of mm -hmm. flowed on photography, uh, just taking an interest in the visual side of, you know, everything that, it, that I do. Yeah, I saw that um, probably like last May, so I don't know if it was locked down for you guys in, in Australia. Uh, yep. But, yeah, you, you, you shot a video clip um, called No Sudden Moves. Um, yeah. That I can, I invite like you guys uh, watching the stream to to check it out because I I really liked it and I think it's also really close to I mean the sensation that I get when I when seeing like an artwork on Super from from Nate, so really like that. Um, I mean maybe you can yeah how how did you come to, um, I mean video making. Um, was it something that you decided like uh, from video shooting video clips as well? I think you 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 you've done a little bit of that in the past. Yeah, I have done a little, a little bit of that, uh, and, and it is a more recent uh, thing. I, I think it's become, come about because I do a lot of work in the music industry, uh, and so when you're working with bands, I shoot a lot of live uh, music shows as well, as far as photography mm -hmm. goes. Cool. And so when you're working with bands, you want to be able to provide um, what they need uh, for them. So whether it be an artwork or um, some promo photography or a video, that's just something that I love being a part of, sort of putting a visual side to, to music. Um, mm. So I really enjoy doing music videos. haven't done lots of them. The one that you mentioned is actually a personal project that I do with a friend of mine. So No Sudden Moves is the band name and um, the the, uh, the track that I did the video for mm, was yeah. the track, um, is The Space Between. And uh, um, yes, to answer something that you, you mentioned, I uh, it was shot in lockdown and that very heavily shaped the, uh, the theme mm. and the feel of that particular clip. So it's a very isolated kind of uh, 
feeling I was trying to get across in that one. Cool. Yeah, the, I, I could definitely feel uh, feel the intention. So, yeah. So um, maybe we can have a look to um, to uh, one of the artworks that you prepared for uh, this uh, conversation, and also like that you uploaded on Super Rare um, recently. Um, that's actually an artwork that myself. Um, I mean, I that's the that, that's your work that I first saw when um, you know I discovered what you did. Uh, yep. So we can have the um, the sound on on the live stream, but okay. there's there's a track. I mean, I'll, I let you describe it, Nate. But I really, sure. I, I always like really like the the feeling of you know. Of, um, a breath and space that y there is in, in these artworks uh, playing with perspectives and, and different, you know, and, and, and these like lines that make everything bigger and wider. Um, and also like, you know, this sense of immensity of like this individual facing um, almost like a galactic, I, I'd say like, uh, you know, um, question. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm super stoked uh, to have you to talking about that because I'm curious, like how how you came, um, you know, how you came about making making this. Okay, cool. So uh, this particular piece is has been around for a little while now. I made it a, a little while ago. Um, yeah, it's hard to kind of know where to start. I guess one thing to mention um, that you were talking about is just that feeling of uh, um, space. Uh, and that the little isolated figure, which features in uh, probably 90% of my artwork, mm -hmm. the little poetry dude. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the man, uh, the little figure that I place in my artwork is really there sort of partially as a representation of myself or mm -hmm. it could be a representation of the viewer. So, you know, the person okay. taking in the artwork. And just I wanted to have, for starters, the figure to be something that gives the play the uh, the scene a sense of scale. And I always I really like the fact that uh, usually the figure is quite small in this grander kind of scale. Um, I also like the idea of this figure uh, being someone that's discovering something, whether it's a you know a new uh, planet or just some, discovering something that's happening or unfolding in front of their eyes. So although that there's, it's a solitary figure, which can sometimes sort of seem quite um, isolated or lonely, I, I sort of like that feeling of wonder as well, or that there's something, you know, larger than a person going on in the scene. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely one thing. Like, there's this sense of, like, almost, I wouldn't, um like stupefaction or you know just like yeah being um uh amazed or or Ooh. stunned by like this 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 uh this thing unfolding in, in in front of our eyes how how did you when did you start making like animated um animated animated artworks like that yeah the animation stuff's been a relatively new thing for me and i still feel like i've got a long way to go in working out um, really good ways that I can utilise it and, and kind of express what I have in my mind. I feel like I'm improving with that, but I've got a ways to go. With um, uh, with this one and with uh, quite a few that I've done previous to this, it's just utilising uh, an app, actually, on my iPad mm -hmm. uh, autograph. Um, and it's something that just can take a still image and give it some movement. And you have quite a bit of control over how you can use that uh, and you can uh, mask out areas of the art and, uh, mm. and it's got quite a, a bit of control but it, it is still limited in what you can do because you okay. are still working with a, a still image and making it move as opposed to you know uh, animating you know specific things and spe specific movements so yeah that, yeah, there's some limitations there, but I don't mind that sometimes. I don't mind being limited and, and seeing how creative you can push those limit limitations. Yeah. Um, 
and I, there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's one thing that people can't uh, see on this live stream uh, or can hear is the is the soundtrack, and yeah. I think it definitely adds. I'm a big fan of like um, audio plus visual uh, digital artworks because I I really feel that in general, you know, also music uh, is very easy to uh, appreciate appreciate and and you know adds a lot to the emotion that an artwork uh communicates and yeah i felt that you know the the music at least like from what i see um looking at this artwork like is really on point so is oh. it an artwork that you made yourself is it something that you've collaborated i saw that you also collaborated with another artist for another artwork so yeah yep so the the audio for this one's actually a little clip um from a song from the album that i released um that the video clip that i made as well so that's the band called no sudden moves and to give you a little bit of a background uh, about it the um the album that i made uh i made it as part of an exhibition that i put on last year mm -hmm. so it's myself and a friend of mine jeff kerr a shout out to jeff too if he's watching at some point um uh, and we made um, eight pieces, eight pieces of music, eight tracks that um, we specifically crafted for eight of my artworks. And the uh, exhibition that I put on was uh, showing the uh, artworks, some moving artworks and some still, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, making available uh, the eight tracks as part of a vinyl record release as well. So it was kind of one big audio visual project that I'd, I'd put together and we'd worked on for about a year. That's, I, I really like it. I, I hope uh, to see other pieces like that with, uh, with this like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, with this mixture of, of video and, and sound because they, they go really well together and you do that perfectly. Um, oh. I've actually got it here. I can a bit of show and tell if you like. Definitely, definitely go ahead. Let me let me put um, put you just a little bit bigger on screen. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a baby of mine. This project, I was I poured mm. a lot into it over uh, probably over the course of more than a year with my friend Jeff. So we released an album, mm -hmm. it's a, a vinyl album, and so it's got the eight artworks there. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, and so each artwork has its own soundtrack, and that's the eight different tracks of the of the album. So, so do you plan to uh, release like an animated version, like you did for First Contact, for each of these tracks? Oh, I've got an animated version for each. Uh, oh, cool! Awesome. Okay, I'm yeah. looking forward to them then. <laughs> cool. And I'll just show you the vinyl itself is pretty beautiful as well. So. Yeah, it's. My yeah, it's wonderful. I had never seen like a transparent vinyl. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to say it in English. Man. This is Amazing. Like... And again, it's got the art on the uh, on the on the Let's middle see. there. So, so yeah, yeah. Do, do you are you how 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 much like are you into space and space exploration or you know relations? Because like there's really a sense of you know um, you know yeah space. Uh, yeah. Colors, well, yeah. So. So without knowing lots, I, I just uh, I just enjoy the uh, I, I guess the wonder and the unknown about it, and that sort of you, you know uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to put words to, but I just kind of like like that sense of discovery, you know, that you could have out in space. I guess that's where it sort of comes from, and I, I think too, just from a design. Point of view, I, I really love black and white artwork, just min, mm -hmm. minimalist kind of stuff, and it really plays into to that as well. So that's kind of another side of where my art comes from. Yeah, there's and there's, I mean, I definitely like, yeah, I mean, the sense of wonder that that space gives in your artworks, I can definitely feel. I also see this this artwork uh, beside uh, behind you mm -hmm. um, of this surfer, Australian surfer, surfer galactic wave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I think like you told me this one was one of your uh, one of your favorites, I guess. It is. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a personal one. That one for me. So my dad, who ha has sadly passed away, he was a big 
big surfer. Like it was uh, his passion was to surf uh, and he really lived for it. So this is my tribute to my dad and uh, it's a, a very personal piece to me. And it's one that I sh when I shared, I, I shared not long after he passed and um, it really struck a chord with a lot of people. And it, mm. it, it's been touching to me to see um, that image shared around a lot because I feel like it's sharing a part of me and a part of my dad. So it's a really kind of special thing for me to see that that um, resonates with people. That's amazing. That's amazing yeah. to be able to, as an artist, like I mean, to be to be an artist also to express this sort of this, this types of feeling and to make it them resonate through you know um, the people around you and stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's quite cathartic. And there's elements of um, sadness in it, I guess, because of where it, it came from. But it, there's also that. A real sharing of something that's part of me and part of my family and I think that that's really special and that's something now that can last so I've sold prints of that and I'm uh, about to uh, tokenize that on a, another platform to that image uh, so to be able to kind of share that and have that something that other people can make a part of their lives is really really special hmm and yeah are you <laughs> Are you a surfer yourself or because you're I'm not <laughs> you're not because you don't you don't live uh do you live near the the ocean or well uh it's probably about half an hour away 30 minutes away from okay uh, beach where I live so we're not we're I'm in a, the suburbs of Melbourne but um but Melbourne is surrounded by beaches so where it's not hard to get to one and enjoy enjoy the coast i definitely love being at the beach but uh, much to my dad's disappointment i was never much of a surfer yeah but you <laughs> i mean you have many other talents right <laughs> oh, absolutely. he was definitely proud he's he was very huge supporter of me and my art and um and def of my music as well my whole family are, are huge supporters so cool that's a nice thing congrats man um yeah so i mean with the time we have left i'd love to chat about i mean there are more and more artists on the platform uh but i mean not 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 that many um you know um i mean quite a few now actually because things grow fast uh it's moving quite a lot the last couple of months isn't it yeah sure but yeah a bit like artists, uh, so we have more and more artists with uh, who have like a longer history in art uh, than they have with like let's say crypto art or crypto platforms. Um, I, I never know exactly how to call that, uh, but like this, this uh, I, I see that you know as a platform and a community um, at the same time. And and so yeah, I mean, you you when did you discover like crypt, crypto art first? And you know, wait, when did you make the jump? Uh, I think you said it was uh, Blau bringing you on the platform. Uh, is Blau Australian or do you know him from elsewhere? No, I don't know him personally, but um, very um, amazing to me. He's a, he's a fan of my art and he follows me on Instagram. Thank. Yeah, that's a nice thing. It's a really nice thing. Uh, and so when I saw him sort of promoting uh, and jumping into the world himself with Slime Sunday and doing doing their thing, uh, it, it just piqued my interest and I, mm. I wanted to know more. So I, I started looking into it all, uh, started seeing more artists that I follow uh, on Instagram and other socials uh, starting to jump in and it's, uh, it just sort of really piqued my interest. And then I, um, Blau was kind enough to um, just introduced me to some people and and kind of helped me on my way cool getting into it and then he was also amazingly kind enough to be the first purchaser of my first tokenized piece as well so it's been i, I can't thank blau enough actually and i'm glad i've got an opportunity to say on record here that uh, i'm hugely thankful of of uh, his part in my journey we'll make sure he hears about it <laughs> 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 I'm very grateful. So I'm also very cool. Super grateful. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. And so, 
amazing. I will just say too that um, the the community that I've, I've found very super rare and um, and crypto art, uh, especially on Twitter, seems to be the home of of the uh, the community yeah. as far as social media goes. Uh, has been just amazing. Like it's it's a real um, breath of fresh air considering uh, Instagram is sort of changing a little. Yeah. So finding this this community and and the support and encouragement that you receive from everyone's been amazing. Yeah, there's this like um, optimism uh, in the community um, and and dynamism of like all these things happening and 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 digital art being uh, I mean in in the, this like sphere uh, being like uh, I mean progressing every day new things new collab new ties between people in the community, uh, new collectors jumping in. Um, and, and that's for sure like a pretty, pretty cool moment to jump in. I mean, compared to something, I mean, cause yeah, I think the, 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 the experience on Twitter is a bit different from, uh, Instagram. I, we're definitely at you, the community, um, the crypto art community is definitely more Twitter than Instagram, but I guess yeah. that over time also for artists uh jumping into the art world like instagram is a bit crowded um you said that you made it in the early days which is a very good thing um yeah, sure. but yeah i've heard about many artists like you know kind of like uh struggling uh uh you know having to make good art and also like making their way on social platforms like instagram uh, which are really really competitive and have you know, tons of things you have to know about the algorithm if you really want to um, uh, make it and, and 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 find your audience on the platform. And so it's almost a full full time job. Um, um, so yeah, I I think that's 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 uh, an interesting space to 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 jump in at the moment. And I, I I'm I'm pretty. I mean, that's that's definitely definitely a great opportunity. But yeah, I was. Wondering in terms of, uh, I mean, you said the community was welcoming and and uh, was a breath of, of fresh air. Um, on on your side, um, is how how is the experience different from what you've known? Uh, you know, uh, perhaps like selling arts, uh, you know, in the traditional art market or galleries or exhibitions or in different ways. I've seen that you also sell a lot of prints. Uh, and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think the crowd is pretty different. Uh, have you, is it something that you've been feeling? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I think the main difference for me is that um, jumping into crypto art, you're you're essentially trying to find collectors. Yeah. So you're trying to um, hopefully present art that's appealing to people that want to collect it. Uh, want it as part of their collection and whether that's something that they they want to keep and, and hold on to, I guess, as the artist, that, that's the hope is that you want people finding your art, that they find yeah. something, you know, meaningful in it and they want to hold on to it. I know that there's the element of um, the financial side of it, so, so people are flipping art and, and on selling and all of that kind of stuff as well. But I guess, yeah, you... Uh, as an artist jumping on there, I, I'm really keen to to get amongst the the collectors that that find the art interesting and want to hold on to it. And um, it's hard to know how to do that sometimes. Like, yeah. you, really, you, you're presenting your art and you you do your best to kind of show people that it's out there. But um, I don't think it always necessarily comes naturally to artists to sell yeah. themselves. So I think that's. A bit of a challenge i guess well that's something that i'm finding yeah for sure um i mean that's something that i uh hear uh quite often like that you know i my work is not is to 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 make art um and i need to be fully focused on that uh on the on the other hand i've also heard about you know um in in let's say podcast videos art from art dealers or whatever that you know uh, focusing a, a substantial part like in the end like at least like 50 percent or so of the artist's time should be focused on you know career promotion selling and all these things mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, on, on your side, is it something that has happened like progressively over time, or um, have you have you had like um, a moment? I mean, you started with music. With is is in a way like maybe as more like we we chatted about it uh, the other time with um, the uh, artist uh, It's Parrot. Uh, yeah. and, 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 um, he, he told us about, you know, how he, tr he brought like his skills from music promotion and all these things to, you know, uh, crypto art and digital art. Yeah. Uh, so is this something, is it, is it, is the, has the same process happened for you or? So, yeah, I definitely think it's helped having, uh, in the bands that I was in, I was quite often the person that was organizing gigs and shows and, trying to get the band noticed and, and out there. So I think that that's definitely helped, having that kind of skill in trying to put yourself in front of people so that people can find you and, and uh, enjoy what you're doing. Mm. So it definitely has helped. But it has been kind of a natural progression because I didn't sort of set out doing this digital art to make it a career. It's been sort of a slow progression of, you know, people finding me and finding what I do interesting and then me sort of going, well, I suppose I should put some prints out there and make stuff available. Uh, and then, you know, you might get featured by a prominent account in on Instagram and more people are interested. So you've got to kind of uh, become more professional and make sure that you're presenting your best self uh, so that when people find you, they know they, they're comfortable that they can buy something that's quality and, and, uh, you know, be a yeah. part of something that's, that's got some substance, I guess. Yeah. I, I think there's also something like with just like building a career, career takes time and it takes like, uh, interactions with many different people. And sure. we tend to see a lot like, uh, this, uh, I, I'm not sure that's the right term, uh, but, um, this overnight successes on, you know, uh, thanks to, uh, crypto art also and the dynamism in the space and the money in the space and, and the attention also like uh, the great collectors that the platform has from the early days and all these things um, yeah. and so people are like yeah there's this obviously like people are wanting to to really uh, you know make it and get attention very quickly while uh, I think you're a good example of someone who have been has been like diversifying, um, you know, the things, you know, activities and and revenue sources and experiences and interactions and connections for a long period of time, and yeah. that's how like now you've built, um, you know, a network and and um, that I, I I I would believe you can feel comfortable as an artist like doing what you love. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a, I think there's a, I don't know the exact saying, but there's a bit of a saying uh, that goes um, that someone's an overnight sensation, but it's 10 years in the making. So I think that there's definitely can be that element of sometimes it can, people can see the success and they feel like you might have come from nowhere, but you know, there's a fair bit of work that's gone in that might not have been seen. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And, and I can definitely, um, I mean, I, I really like also the fact that, uh, you, you know, one can see that you found, uh, I mean, at least from what I've seen. And for example, like when I look at the exhibition you made, like the photography exhibition you made, like Twisted Landscapes, uh, yeah. I can feel, you know, the, the, the continuity or continuum of, you know, or like your style, even in these photographies. And uh, yeah, I think like also one thing that people really, look for because you know in, in in artists when they first see uh an, an art page an instagram page or a super page is like this consistency in style and, and 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 seeing that the artist is able to um you know uh even if, if, within a con constrained space with a like you know with a a, a size a, a color uh it, it, you know um uh, recurring let's say uh, tones and, and colors and and techniques and stuff like explore many different um things um yeah. and i think that's in i mean that's a thing i guess uh that you know super you know tells artists is like um 
having a unique and consistent style is definitely the most valuable asset before, you know, having an audience on social media before anything else. Yeah. Um, but that's something I can definitely feel when I, when I, when I browse, uh, your artworks and, you know, probably also thanks to your, thanks to your experience and maturity. Oh, that's nice to know. Thank you. Uh, sometimes, I guess probably more a couple of years ago, I felt like I wasn't actually that consistent with what I produced. It was a little bit more uh, eclectic than yeah. anything. But I, I guess there is the running themes through things with uh, with my solitary figure and, mm. and trying to perhaps produce a scene that is uh, something that's interesting to, to look at. Hmm. Awesome. I, I think that's uh, that's a great way to to end uh, this conversation. Uh, unless there's anything you want to <laughs> to add on top of that, uh, I'm not sure. I'm very thankful for the opportunity. I wanted to thank you again, and I'm super um, stoked to have become part of the Super Rare uh, family. So. I'm loving, I'm, I'm only a month in. I think I've been on the platform yeah. for a month. But a but, month um, in, in here is like a year in, in the real <laughs> world. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what we say. Yeah, that's a fair call. It kind of, it's a very intense kind of thing to be part of, but it's, it's awesome. So uh, enjoying the ride at the moment and hopefully can uh, continue to find those awesome collectors that are out there. Cool, sure. Well, we'll be we'll do our best to bring as many collectors as we can, and especially the ones who like your art. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this live stream. Um, we'll see um, each other for a new spotlight next week. Thank you, Nate, for joining this one. Really enjoyed it. We'll keep following you, and cool. yeah, have a great evening over there. And I enjoy my day. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you.